Let's chat now to Advocate Dumi Senzebeza, who's the Chancellor at Fort Hare University. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Advocate. Uh, this is a very, very worrying story. Um, what could have possibly been the reason for this attempted assassination, according to your understanding? Well, I, I don't want to get into speculation as to what may have led to this. But I will tell you this. Um, Bushungu and I were appointed as Chancellor, I mean Vice Chancellor and Chancellor, more or less on the same, at the same time in 2017. And I have known him before. I, uh, I taught at the King Elizabeth College for Sons of Chiefs and Headmen when he was there also in, uh, in 1975, 76 with Olomisa and all the other who went to that. So I know him to be something who is extremely intelligent. I know him when he was professor uh, in the University of Cape Town. So when the two of us were appointed as vice chancellor, he as vice chancellor and I as chancellor, it was really a meeting of people who have known each other. And I know from that he is a very committed person when it comes to doing the work. Now, you will know uh, that last year, I think, there was an assassination. It was I, We must call things by their name. Uh, there was an assassination of, uh, of a fleet manager. Now, when a person is murdered in broad daylight, as they are driving, uh, in bamba to bamba traffic. It shows the desperation of the people who want to exit. But at the same time, it calls into question what is happening in our institution. This person, clearly because he's a fleet manager, must have come against what I consider a life goal. It's a whole layer of corruption that has been taking place. In that and I know uh, that Bushungu made it his mission, as he should, given that he is the vice chancellor. Uh, he made it his mission to do his best to eradicate any corruption. Number of people were displaced, number of people left, number of people resigned, the number of people could not stay in light of what they so I can speculate that far as to the reason why he has you know, uh, escaped this one, you know, uh, assassination. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question is, why is it happening? Yes, why is it happening? And uh, of course, now there's some kind of government intervention. You heard the um, minister and the presidency saying that they are going to be coming out to establish what's going on. But many would say, why was this not done um, when the fleet manager, for example, when, it, when, when this happened to the fleet manager? Um, you know, you don't want an environment where they're supposed to be teaching and learning to be a war zone, and this is what it possibly is starting to look like. So, w why is this happening, and what should be done to avoid this? Well, I suppose, you know, um, to be quite constructive, and I would hope that everyone is going to take this in the spirit in which I was taking. Um, it does not help, and it will not help the situation to say, why did this not happen? I can speculate, but then speculation doesn't help you, doesn't help the South African public, doesn't help you. I think the lack of doing that which needed to be done, uh, and I think this is what Rungu is feeling, is because there is I think his sense, judging from what he has been saying in the media, his sense is that the department that is directly involved with the institutions, the Department of Education, didn't show as much care as it ought to have done. It didn't give protection 
to those who are running these institutions as it ought to have done. For instance, I believe Mr. Busungu said when the police manager uh, was murdered uh, last year, year before last, I'm not so sure, but we all know when he was murdered. I think from what I read, he says to me, you know, what really concerns me is that when that happened, and that is, a, you know, a, a member of my executive, a member of my staff, he is murdered in cold blood, he is assassinated, and it's all because he takes his job seriously. What is the job? He is managing the fleet of vehicles in this university. Because uh, of what happened? Well, I made contact with him and he told me that, you know, he's still shocked by what happened to him, especially when he held against the backdrop of what happened to the fleet manager. He, however, knowing him as I do, is a no, <laughs> he is determined to do his job. He's a no quitter. He's not going to quit his job. All he needs is from the highest office in the land an assurance that not only is, going, is his own security going to give up, but that there is going to be a very conscious effort to make sure that the SIU work that he has been instrumental in getting to get to probe into these layers of corruption does its work without interference. And if people are going to be assassinated because they have taken a stand on that basis, then it is the responsibility of the highest office in the land mm. to protect those people who um, have stood up to the We can't have these assassinations everywhere, as all, anywhere, and everywhere else. When people are, you know, revealing you know, layers and layers of corruption and wrongdoing, then they get murdered. It can't happen. We are not against the, against the state. If we have not reached there, then let's not reach there. But we are very close to it. If now and again we get to hear assassination mm. as uh, crazy. Just, yeah, I mean, it's it's really it's. It's hair-raising to actually see all of this unfolding. Just lastly, advocates, I want to ask you if you fear for your life in any way and what you are hoping tomorrow's delegation will bring. Do you think there's going to be beefed-up security for Professor Butlungo or do you think it's just a matter of coming to see what happens and then swept under the rug and lives still remain at risk? Well, God forbid if it is the latter. Mm. You know, because and it will be a very clear sign that you know not only the ministry of doesn't really care for the live who are doing their job in furtherance of the aims and goals of the institutional democracy that South Africa should continue. So I would be very disappointed. I don't know. You know, I'm not a securocrat. You know, I don't know what can measure. But I would hope that Mr. Busungu, and I'm going to talk to Mrs. Akela Busungu, who I realize may not even want to be talking to this person, may want to talk to the president. I'm going to prevail upon it to meet this delegation, to listen to what they are saying, and to put to it what she considers would be practical ways in which the security of the, you know, the, the management and all other, you know, um, leaders of the university um, they, that with their lives are protected. Okay. In a, in a very... Yeah, we'll have to just wait and see what comes out of tomorrow. But, of course... Um... 
we'll, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you so much for uh, your time this evening. We do appreciate it. That was Advocate Dumi Sensebeza, who's the Chancellor at Fort Hare University.